Let me know, has it now started? Recording has started. Fantastic. And then I'm going to share um, my um, screen with you. So I just want to check with you. Are you able to see the screen? Perfect. OK, fantastic. So we're going to start this. Um, Right, so uh, welcome to our very first LCA webinar of 2023. We're almost at the end of the year, so wonderful to be able to share these, this information with you. I am going to go through the slides, so if you do have questions, you are very welcome to keep those questions, and then at the end of the session, uh, we will have a Q&A and then you can just um, have your questions, which you will be able to ask. And then I also have Mark Halt here from the training department. And um, so that is fantastic to have him here with his expertise. And also uh, my husband, Marius, is also on board. So I'm sure that we will be able to answer your questions but if there's anything afterwards, we can deal with that. And uh, OK, right. So now let's see. how. OK, I just felt in my heart to start with Proverbs 22 verse 6, where it says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So although we are talking about the LCA, which is the focus is going to be in our high school. I think, you know, it is important for us to know that we are instilling those biblical principles uh, which they've learned from a young grade. Um, one uh, of, um, uh, actually, when Auntie uh, Joy um, went to be with the Lord, her son actually uh, spoke to me and something that is quite amazing where he said and this uh, phrase I actually was inspired by what he said he said that education is a way of life a combination of skills and expertise that stretches beyond the limits of a mere exit qualification our goal is to instill a firm biblical foundation without the importation of the wisdom of the Holy Spirit we are merely filling time without any eternal reference or meaning. So as we are busy with it, this, I want us to realize that what is our foundation? What are we working from? So at AEE, we offer four exit qualifications. So the one is the Lighthouse Christian Academy, and that is what this webinar is going to give you more information on. And then we have the General Education Diploma, the NAC and then um, the British International uh, Examination. Now, the Lighthouse Christian Academy is a USA qualification. So it is, it is a distance learning institution in the USA, and it uses the ACE program. And it offers a certified high school diploma. So this diploma has recognized level of accreditation from the USA that is both regional and international in its scope. So regional means that any student who has a certificate will be able to apply to a university in the United States and actually be able to um, uh, pursue this. Is everything OK? I hear some background noise. Okay. So this qualification is also evaluated by SACWA and as equivalent to the NQ4 level 4 matrix certificate. So basically, it means that the certificate holds the same uh, value as the NEC certificate which students receive. OK, now, um, if you look at, uh, obviously, why would we consider LCA since it is a certificate, which is uh, issued by America. So uh, one of the reasons is it is an ACE from grade R up to grade 12 with all the benefits that we know the program offers. 
So students work on the paces and the mastery of the content is key. And obviously there is no final examination. I just want to quickly just um, emphasize this point that as our students work through the paces, our goal is to let them get to an exit qualification and we want them to be well equipped for university and for the ex um, once they finish their grade 12. So that is why um, working through those paces, pace procedures, all of that is critically important and then students will receive an exit qualification that is USAF recognized for a foreign conditional exemption for tertiary access. So I am saying quite a lot at this point in time, and you might already have questions popping up in your mind, but as I said, um, let's go through all the slides and some of these will become more clearer as we carry on. So with the LCA, there are two ways uh, which we are um, going to be able to register. The first one is a dual enrollment. So that is for students at full schools, which has gold or diamond membership. And the cost is 8,900 for the registration with LCA. Now we review this on an annual basis because obviously the RAND dollar exchange rate fluctuates. So we try to estimate an amount that we've put together. We say this is the fixed amount for the year 2023, because obviously we don't want to every week tell um, schools, OK, this is the new amount. So that is fixed annually. And obviously we will revise it beginning of 2024 and we try to keep those costs as low as possible, um, but that depends on the RAND dollar. And then for the students who've uh, received their certificate, there is a 3,000 RAND rebate, which the parents can apply for once the learner has received their certificate from LCA. But this is uh, provided that the learner completed grade 8 to 12, on ACE. So this is quite important because once the students complete their certificate and they receive it from LCA, then you can contact us uh, with the um, proof of um, the certificate and then we um, give you uh, give the money to the parent. So it's not the 3000 you deducted from the 8,900. So they first pay and then once they uh, are finished with that. Um, the 8,900, I will explain that also in, a, in the next slides because initially it looks like a lot of money, but I will talk through the actually how we can um, plan for that. Then we have the direct enrollment. So that is for all the full schools who does not have gold or diamond membership and all our homeschool learners. So the cost here is 11,900 for the registration with LCA. And then there's also that 3,000 rand uh, rebate uh, for the students. But this is um, for students um, from homeschool academies. Obviously, any school who does not have the gold status or diamond status, who, uh, who has the provisional membership, um, do not qualify uh, for the rebate. So obviously, um, we can talk about that. I quickly just want to go back to one point that I made here. Uh, with uh, 11,900. The first question would be, but why do the direct enrollment pay um, more than the dual enrollment? And it basically uh, comes to where uh, the, the gold status and diamond status, the PACE procedures are in place, uh, the moderation of the test, all of that happens at school level. Whereas with a direct enrollment, LCA and AEE, we are more involved 
in the moderation of those uh, paces. Okay, then of course there are going to be additional costs. I mean, which, sorry, is there a problem? So additional costs. Um, I want us also to make sure that we communicate this to the parents, and that is the postage of the LCA certificate from America. So um, what I did is I am looking through all the material that Auntie Joy has left for me, and up to now I couldn't really see what is the exact amount. So after um, the completion of this webinar, I will just be in communication with LCA, and I will just find out from them what is that exact cost, but that is an additional SAT is also um, optional for students, um, but that also you register with um, is for the SAT. We recommend that students do that in their grade 12 year, especially if they want to study a degree go the degree course at a university. Then once you received your LCA certificate, the students need to apply uh, to USAF for the foreign conditional exemption, and that is about um, 700 rand at this point in time. So once they receive that, they will be able to um, use that to apply to local universities. Okay, I want to get to these five critical steps. And this is where I want you to bear in mind that the 11,900 comes in at step number four. OK, so step number one, you all can just mute yourselves. That would be great. I wouldn't have made it in time. So for the grade eight, OK, are you all muted? On the road. So I didn't. So, so maybe, maybe Mark, you can mute them. <laughs> okay, but welcome you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just busy going through the stuff now, Louisa. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Um, so with a break. Louise has been muted. We can't hear her. I'm not sure why she's been muted. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find out how to unmute her. Um, She's the she's the she's the host of the meeting, so she shouldn't be muted. Uh, we cannot hear. Uh, Marius, are you able to go to her office and see where why she's muted? Uh, I'm doing so now. Sorry, I don't know why she's muted. Right, are you able to hear me now? Yep, that's better. Um, Sorry, I'm not too sure what I, happened there. No, don't worry. Um, are you, um, so let's just quickly see on the PowerPoint, um, where did you lose uh, my explanation? As, as you started the five critical steps. Okay, um, this, so uh, let me With go the slide from, that the, now. from this slide. Are you yep. also, okay. Right, uh, the five critical steps, all good. So yeah, 
Um, we meet with the parents uh, when the student is in grade eight. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the way is that you do it at your schools, but I want to recommend that you actually call in the parent and the student. It's actually fantastic. Once you involve the student, they suddenly realize um, they're getting towards the end of their schooling. So that's also a little bit of an internal motivation for them. So you meet with a parent, you finalize the exit route, and then there's a um, AEE declaration, which you just need to sign. Uh, the student and the parent sign it. And as I said, if you don't have any of these documents, please feel free, just send me an email and we will gladly uh, send it to you. Then in grade nine, we complete the pre-academic projection and then you send it to us for approval. This is just to make sure that we don't have any hiccups once the student get to the end of grade 12. And then the student will continue working on their paces according to this academic projection. And I will show you an example later on, and I will explain a few things there, but the students will continue with that and it is quite important for you to keep the SPCs up to date and just to check the academic projection. And then there's an academic projection towards graduation. And I have one example, which I will show you, uh, which is also quite helpful. And then the big thing happens at the end of grade 11. But I think it is quite important for us and quite helpful to have a look at these steps. So I'm going to spend a few more minutes on this slide. So at the end of grade 11, you register, the, the student will be registered with LCA. The process starts from September, but we have a window period up to the end of February of the following year. So the students have they more or less a year to complete um, the work or um, so that year's work is approximately, well, that would be the six credits. Now, for a student who has six credits and the student takes a little bit longer to complete the year's work, it's not a crisis. We have a grace period of about three months which we do allow the students uh, to complete their work. So there is a little bit of that um, extra time that is given, but then also, especially for students who many of the schools hear about the LCA now, and they say, but we have a student currently in grade 11, possibly in grade 10, is it, um, will the student be able to register with LCA? And then we say, yes, students can do that. Obviously, the academic projection will be from grade nine um, up to grade 12. So the, the students are allowed to get transfer credits. So that is allowed. But the main thing is what is important to communicate to the parents is the fact that if a student registers with the LCA a little bit later, there has to be a minimum of six months that the student will be registered with the LCA. So if a student do register a little bit later and the student complete their pace work uh, in less than six months, it's not a crisis but they will have to wait the six months period before they will be able to receive um, the certificate. And I think um, you will understand that um, it is a registered qualification, a certificate with um, the USA. So to make that certificate um, just the quality of it, 
Um, we don't want to compromise in that. So that is why there is that waiting period um, of six months. And then in the grade 12 year, the student complete their paces and um, submit their pace tests uh, that you submit to AEE. And if you direct enrollment, then we also uh, moderate those tests before we submit it to LCA. And then the dual enrollment, um, you complete the paces and it's all submitted um, for the certificate. Okay, I quickly want to show you this one. It might not be very clear on your screen, um, but that to me is not too much of a concern. I just wanted to show you how the, um, the direct and the dual enrollment, it's the exact same academic projection that you submit to us. It is interactive, which means that you will be able to complete everything on this. So this is the form that uh, students will complete at the end of grade eight, beginning of grade nine. Or any student who will come in maybe grade 10, grade 11 to register. So when you are going to receive this, many of you have already worked with this um, academic projection. You will notice clearly they will show you uh, the various subjects. So it's maths, your English, your so social studies, the science. And then you can obviously choose um, whether you want to do honours or just the essay tertiary um, bound one, which is what most students work for. And then there are electives. So you will see that for the honours, um, you have your eight electives. So they show you, so when you see your academic projection, you will notice that there are these capital R's and they show you the total credits required. So that is fixed. So we cannot change any of that. But when you get to the electives, they do give you um, additional electives, which you are allowed to add. And those electives are um, any PACE related electives and they also give it on the LCA website but we can also help you with that should you have any problems. So this is the very, very first document that you send to us at AEE. We make sure that all the minimum requirements are met. If there are any problems, we will notify you immediately. And then this academic projection is the roadmap for the students to work on towards graduation. And then we get another form. This is the high school academic projection towards graduation, which is a really helpful document. So this is one that's already completed just for example uh, purposes. So it shows you the maths. So all the courses that a student is currently busy with. In grade nine, you start, to, you can already in grade nine start to, um, as a student complete paces, you can start to fill this in. So this document, you don't need to wait until the time that you are going to register your student with LCA. You can, Keep this up to date and then you will see here this middle column will give you um, this column. You need to have a minimum of six credits uh, in order to at the time when you are going to register with the LCA. So this gives you quite a nice idea of what have the student completed what is still necessary to complete. And then um, obviously you work with it and update the form um, once a year. 
or obviously depends on the school, uh, your system, you might prefer to just populate this once you register the student at the end of the grade 11 year. So this is, is um, it depends on what is best for you. OK, so this is my presentation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, stop the sharing um, in order to be able to just allow um, for questions. If anyone has a question, anything that you would like um, to ask, and maybe I will just put my face here, so at least you don't talk to LB, you just talk um, to me. Um, so uh, one thing I just want to say before any of you would like to ask a question, when you look at all the costs, um, the 11,900, and obviously if a student is in grade nine, um, we want to maybe, you know, try to plan uh, by the time they get to grade 12, it it will probably be more than that, is um, instead of waiting till the grade 12 year or end of grade 11 and tell the parents um, you need to pay 11,900 or possibly 12,000 next year, um, you can, uh, as a school plan, that from grade eight, if students or grade nine, if as, as soon as a parent has signed um, that declaration, you might consider to add a 500 rand a month or a 400 rand a month to the fees um, of the high school student. And you could possibly label it and say, this is your LCA registration. Um, so that at least the amount starts to accumulate. So when the student gets to grade 12, then they don't need to suddenly get um, the uh, shop. Sure, now I've got 11,900 and then six months later or a year later, the student receives their grade 12 certificate from LCA and now they need to pay the postage and then they they need to apply for USAF, and then it's 700 Rand, and then it's SAT. There they register for SAT on the college board website, and that's and and I think that is oftentimes what puts parents off is to say, you know, LCA is very expensive. But if you actually look at it from if you register from grade nine and you start to slowly accumulate that um, amount, then by the time that you get to grade 12, you've already got those fees. So, um, and then it's not um, as complicated a process as initially you might have experienced. So in closing, I just want to say that um, when I first heard of LCA, it's quite, you know, what is this? You know, is it something that can really work for us? And in the last couple of months, being involved with the LCA, uh, speaking to them from America, uh, we've been building such a lovely, positive relationship. And um, they're very helpful, very, um, you know, it's, it's a good relationship that we have. And while we are still trusting God for our own um, uh, certificate recognized in South Africa, um, it is a, a good opportunity for students who wish to continue with their paces at their own rate and still be able to get into a university. Um, the LCA is a wonderful um, opportunity to pursue that if 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 students would like to continue with paces up to the time that they graduate. OK, so this is from my side, so I will ask Marius and Mark. Um, you've been dealing a lot with schools and um, if there's anything that you would like to add to the presentation, you're very welcome. 
But I also want to say that from our side, um, we are dedicated and we want to ensure that parents and students and staff members are well informed. And I don't want any one of the schools to feel um, that they're out in the dark, they're on their own, they don't know what to do. So if if that is you, then please, um, you know, make time to contact us if it's necessary to do an individual meeting. Um, you're welcome to contact me and we want to ensure that the journey that you have with your parents and the students is a positive one. And yeah, so I don't know if anyone wants to ask something or is there anything that Marius, Mark, if you want to add to it, um, then I'll give you that opportunity. There's a hand, yes. Lindsay. Good morning, Louise. Good morning, colleagues. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to point out there's a comment on the chat that somebody's yes. asking a question. And uh, if you will allow okay. me, I'll just read oh, it. Or... Yes, thank you. Um, yes, you're welcome to. Okay. I was. Oh. <laughs> no. What reassurances can we offer the parents and the student that they will definitely be able to enter ISA University via this route? And are there any faculties not allowing this as an entrance um, requirement? Um, I want to answer it in a broad uh, spectrum in the sense of coming from um, an NEC. If you look at any student, not only ACE students, but any school um, in South Africa, when a student has a grade 12 certificate, even the uh, NEC certificate which students receive when they write the IEB exam or if they write the, the matric exam. None of those students have a guarantee that they will be able to gain access to a university in South Africa. And that is purely because I think there are just so many students applying uh, for university entrance so it doesn't matter whether you have your NEC certificate or a foreign um, certificate, the entrance into university are quite um, because of the, the volume. So to answer the question, first of all, is no school can give a guarantee to any student, even a government school or an IEB school. If, if they do that, um, it's very dangerous to, to do that because you know what the universities have their um, access requirements. But saying that, when students are in grade 12 and they want to apply or they are planning on entering a university, we highly recommend that the student write the SAT because the SAT is known by the universities. It gives them just um, some documents that show them that this student, when they write the SAT, the higher the marks are um, in their maths and their science, uh, the maths and the English, it is definitely going to give them that opportunity. So we do have universities where students have been accepted um, using the LCA and um, I will make a note of it and I can um, send that information to you um, to let you know which universities have actually um, accepted our students, um, you know, with the, the current LCA certificate. I don't know if Marius might be able to just off the cuff be able to just give you that information, but we do keep record of any student who gains access to a university with the LCA certificate. So we have that information available, so we are happy to um, communicate that to the schools. Um, so I'm Louisa, not too if sure. I could share, yes. If yes. I could add something. Yes, um, please I think do. 
your uh, comments around the university entrance is spot on. What what is very good to uh, assure parents, just in terms of exactly that question that that came uh, around how we can give parents some kind of reassurance. Mm -hmm. um, the regulations are fixed and in place that allows a student with a USA credit qualification in this particular case in the, the high school diploma from LCA uh, together with a letter from a university that states that they will accept them um, in uh, in the USA in particular um, which we assist with for them to get that it's not a difficult thing at all and or um, Alternatively, they can write the SAT and as long as they get a score of 1,110 or more, um, they will actually uh, be able to take the high school diploma with their SAT score or then otherwise with the, um, the letter from a university in the USA uh, and submit that to USAF. And then the regulation is just plainly for, uh, uh, followed. In other words, there can't be a comeback from USAF saying, no, sorry, we can't allow this student to get a foreign conditional exemption certificate. Uh, the regulation says, if you meet the requirements, then you will get a foreign conditional exemption certificate. And that's, that's the reassurance that we can give parents. As Louisa said, the mm -hmm. moment that the student gets to apply to the university, um, it is outside of anybody's uh, control in terms of if that student would be accepted or not, um, because there's so many factors in play. Um, as was mentioned, you know, faculty requirements, um, specific universities could have specific um, quotas that they need to meet in terms of how many students um, with a foreign qualification they are allowed to accept in a particular faculty. That's why we always say students should apply to more than one university. Um, and, and then also the higher the SAT score, um, they are this, their, their application or the likelihood of their application being successful just um, uh, actually raises exponentially. Um, mm -hmm. So the reassurance effectively that you can give parents is uh, provided that the requirements are met that is necessary to uh, receive a certificate of conditional exemption, foreign conditional exemption from USAF, provided that is met, the student will be issued with that certificate, which um, they will then be able to use uh, in their application to a university in South Africa. So that is, that's not an if or hopefully it will happen um, or we trust it will happen. It's already been um proven over the past two years and we have around 14 students that have already been successfully lca graduates who've successfully applied to university of south africa and been um, uh, accepted so if you want to ask the question about medicine and um uh, you know the old age old um debate or, or, st or story conundrum around applic uh, applying to medicine, applying to veterinary science. Um, those courses we all know are very, very, very highly competitive in terms of, of the number of students that are accepted each year. Um, prob probably 10% of the students, if not less, of all the students that apply for um, medicine actually do get accepted and there it's really just a case of uh, the best um, will be the ones that will be taken um, and, and there's no control that anybody has over that. Um, it does not uh, does not per se depend on the qualification that you have but if a student um, I mean let, let's let's give you the absolute um, uh, a blunt fact is just the fact that if a student is really hard set on going to study medicine, 
um, in South Africa at the South African University. Um, it's probably good for them to consider the, the National Senior Certificate through IEB. Um, that that will um, put them in a, in a good position, um, but that does not mean that the LCA student will not be able to, to be successful in their application. But yeah, I think uh, realistically, statistically, the NEC would be a better option for those students. But uh, generally speaking, um, there is no reason why a student who achieve the LCA qualification cannot gain access to university in South Africa, because the regulations make provision for it as long as they meet requirements. Yes, thank you, Marius. Um, I also um, just wanted to just add to that, and that is that it is quite, um, from my own personal experience, I have seen that um, universities, um, or let me put it this way, that a school starts to have a track record with a university. So if you have students who are really hardworking and are producing excellent results because of your procedures at school, your work ethic of the students, those things are in place. And then you get a first student that goes to university and then they start to um, do excel at a certain faculty. That is also creating a testimony for your school. So in future, when students apply to the same faculty and they realize, oh, but this student comes from this particular school, it does have a positive effect, you know, on the admission process as well. So do it well and um, you will create that track record. And, um, and as Marius said, all the legal documents are in place. So we're not saying that this is a certificate and when you get to university application, it's not all those processes are in place. Are there any others? There's a question here. I'm a homeschool mom, University of Priestad had an online webinar specifically for homeschool. Um, students recently, they are the first universities that has done this. Apparently just wondering if AE are aware of this. I'm not aware of it, so I'm not sure, but that is fantastic. Um, uh, yes, sorry, Marius. Yes, no, I did respond there to Candice in the chat box. Oh. Yes, yes, that would be fantastic. So any information like this, if you receive it, uh, we would love to be also in contact. And, and as I said um, earlier on, we are here uh, for you as a school, for parents, for homeschoolers, uh, we want to lift up your hands and make that process as easy as possible um, because we know that um, if we have students coming from um, our AEE schools, they're well-grounded, they um, character-wise well-developed, so they are testimony, I agree, uh, I believe, to the rest of the world and to the universities. Any other questions? OK, so shall I give you a minute or so just to think of it? What do you, OK, what do we do with students that cannot take pure maths? Um, they are, um, it all depends on um, the age of the student. Um, if you get a student who starts in grade eight level and um, do the, uh, the math spaces, um, you know, then because they can work at their own pace and they might need to take a little bit longer, um, that is workable. But sometimes you get students who get to uh, old um, compared to um, their peers uh, and really starting to fall behind in the maths, then um, they can do 
um, the, the, by the preparatory what um, course. Now there's another name for it, Maurice. What do they? It's the you have the essay um, college bound one, the honors. So when you look on your academic projection, there's um, a course where there's less um, credits needed. So students can choose to go that route. Um, so, but um, it's a good question because LCA is obviously. Um, it focuses on the pure maths, so it is. It can be a concern for a student who might be older and still very far behind um, in their maths. So that is why um, it is quite important and helpful if you start to get students on the LCA. If the parents say, in grade eight, I would like my student to work towards um, the LCA certificate, then immediately you know, as I, you remember the, the one slide I showed you, the academic projection, which becomes your road map. So for some students, it might look that it's not going to be possible, but once you've simplified it and you start to work at it, it becomes a lot, lot more um, workable. And um, as a, a supervisor also in a learning centre, I've also experienced that if the students do the paces well, and they we try not to let them fall behind too far in the lower grades, then it is workable. But in exceptional situations, you are welcome to contact me privately, and I can you know maybe assist you um, with that. But LCA is you know maths is a requirement, so for a student really battles with maths and not, um, you know, are really not able to cope with it, uh, we can um, have a look at other options. Maurice, I see you unmuted yourself. Uh, yes, no, I just wanted to mention that uh, certificate you were referring to is the general certificate, That's which is it, yes. one level lower Gen than the college preparatory, so it will not be possible to use the general certificate to apply for university entrance. Um, uh, so one just needs to keep that in mind if you if you if you uh, want to sacrifice the maths um, major up to grade twelve level and uh, finish earlier. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I do. I do believe that it might be something that we can uh, can consider, maybe possibly for the um, the new year, and schools can give us feedback. But specifically um, working the paces in maths, and I will also meet with Mark and Jeshwin heading up the, the training um, as well, is for us to have a look as, as, as schools. How can we help the students not to fall behind too far um, in maths? So, if that is a need for more clarity and more information on that, um, then I, it might be something that we need to consider because also visiting schools, um, I think that is the main concern for many, many schools um, is definitely the maths. And how can we help them not to uh, get to the point where they are almost forced to drop maths whereas maybe we could intervene at a lower grade to ensure that the majority of our students are able to continue with the maths up to the very last pace. Okay, I hope we managed to answer most of the questions. Anything else you would like to add? Okay, as I said that um, I have recorded um, this, um, this session. So I see there's a hand, David. Sorry, I came in late. Um, um, will you be publishing a, a registration process like we do for IV? Uh, yes, 
um, that uh, we are busy with. There are two things that we are busy working on. Um, the first is an e-flyer uh, will be sent out to the schools. The plan is to let it go out the end of next week. And then um, we will do a similar thing uh, for the LCA. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Can I go ahead and leave it? There is another hand, Louisa, from NG. I'm not sure who that is. Um, Comprehend Africa cannot be done if a learner is doing the LCA. Uh, because the Comprehend Africa is CAPS aligned, um, if we have a student who has already completed Comprehend Africa up to grade nine, we can um, apply for um, transfer credits. But um, saying that the whole, um, in what format can we or to what degree can we actually allow students to continue on Comprehend Africa? Um, that is something that um, I will I would um, be in communication with LCA um, to be able to see, you know, to what extent that can be done. And up to now, um, it's been accepted as a transfer credit, but if it can be used in the place of um, the current courses in um, the LCA, I will need to um, double check on that. I don't want to just say, um, you know, that is possible, but um, I can I can double check. But transfer credits will be possible. Okay. There's still one more hand, Louisa. I don't know who okay. it is. I'm not too sure. There's no name. It's just. OK, well, you're welcome to ask the question. Maybe it's. Um, oh, it was David. I don't know how to say David has you asked this question. Yeah. <laughs> OK. Right, um, I do see another hand is Stephen. Stephen, you're welcome to ask your question. Yeah, I'm not sure, Stephen, whether you still want to ask a question. Okay, you see, oh no. I'm not sure if, if Stephen's he... muted. He might be talking, but he's <laughs> muted. Okay. Could be, Stephen, so you can just check. Um, I would like to maybe just in closing say that um, uh, we really value your input, um, the streamlining, the communication to the schools um, is really helpful. I have received some uh, feedback from schools uh, explaining to me how they've experienced, um, you know, the documents that we've been sending uh, to U.S. schools, and they've also um, made suggestions as to what is going to be more helpful for schools. So please always feel free um, to give us your input and um, so that we can make it, um, you know, work it better. So um, with the Comprehend Africa, as I say to you, I would rather want to just double check from um, LCA to what extent will they accept um, the Comprehend Africa. At this point in time, um, when a student do the LCA, they will, um, will be um, receiving uh, transfer credits. So I would like to just double check with them whether we can do a blanket, um, you know, uh, where students can just do Comprehend Africa up to grade nine and we don't need to worry about transfer credit. But I need to just double check on that. 
Okay. Are there any messages that I've missed? Would like to make sure everyone is all good. Uh, but as I said, if you need more clarity on anything, uh, welcome to just send me an email and, and we will get back to you. Uh, but those documents um, will also go out. You should be able to expect it round about the end of next week. But if you didn't get anything, please just get hold of us. Your children are important to us. And we want to ensure that not one child is missed the opportunity of entering into a tertiary institution because of a miscommunication. I do see a hand. I'm not too sure who it is, but yeah. um, you're welcome. Yes. Hello, how are you? Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is a bit is a bit uh, 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 challenging because I was from one meeting to another also on Teams. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, I was. there was a meeting before this time, so that I'm just finishing that one now. So, and uh, 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 we are unable to, to follow up. How, how do we get this now to, to maybe we can listen to it again and then we can send maybe some requests if there is any need? Uh, what I will do is I will speak to the marketing department um, to send the link um, to the schools uh, on either the D6 or I will I will make sure that um, the, all the schools that registered will get um, the communication or else our marketing department, um, we will ensure that it will be sent to the schools. Okay. Okay. Right. Hi. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> I you. see a hand there also. Louisa Elizabeth. Yeah. Is that your question? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Fine. Right. So um, if you are happy and you um, don't have any questions, um, uh, I will close the meeting. And uh, shall we just say maybe one more question and then I can stop the recording and um, then we can just end the session. Okay, but I did, I do see the questions on Comprehend Africa, so I will definitely look at that and also give you feedback on that. Okay, are you all happy if I stop the recording? Yes, right. as long as